So I've been using first principles methods to look at yttria doped um, cereal and my, um, my grad student working with Dr. Beckman. So I'm only going to show you one slide showing equations because I know most of you don't really care about the theory, but uh, I'm using density functional theory and it's based upon the cone sham equation shown here. And what's powerful about density functional theory is it allows us to approximate the mini body problem using a one electron uh, based upon the charge density shown down here. Um, one thing about doing DFT calculations is you have to do a self-consistent calculation because you need an input for your charge density and your potential energy, but in order to get the charge density, you actually need to solve the cone sham equations. So it starts by using an initial guess for your charge density, and you input that to calculate your potential energy, and then you can solve your cone sham equations, and then um, calculate your new charge density. And if that's converged good, you can go on. If it's not, you reiterate the process using your new charge density. And for those of you um, that know DFT, for these calculations, I have included a plus U term to allow for a better description of the 4F states and the 2P states. So to begin, just looking at the pure crystals and making sure that we're able to corroborate what's being seen already, um, just looking at the structure and calculating lattice constants, um, I don't know if it's left or right to you guys, but uh, over here, we have Syria in the fluoride structure, and here we have yttria in the Bixbyite structure. And we can see from the lattice constants calculated using DFT, these compare well with the experiments, which are given in parentheses down below. Um, they're within the errors expected of using DFT. And then we also looked at the electronic properties of these pure crystals. And I know many of the experimentalists, if we look down here, comparing the DFT band gaps with the uh, experimental band gaps, they're significantly lower, but that's to be expected within DFT. But um, these are values that are comparable uh, to what has been seen in the literature, um, calculated within the literature. But as we know, these pure crystals aren't what we're interested in, and it's defects that make them interesting. So to begin, I, I first looked at the intrinsic defects. So we have our Schottky uh, uh, reaction here and our Frankel pairs. And what we can, or I guess one thing I should point out for the other um, computational people is that I did use a two by two by two supercell where we have 96 atoms. And this is needed because if we use too small of a cell because there's periodic boundary conditions, when we introduce that defect, we can get interactions of the defect as uh, the cell is uh, replicated using those periodic boundary conditions. But from these calculations, what we can see is that the intrinsic defects formation energies are actually very high and they're not as likely to form. Um, but the, again, these intrinsic defects aren't really what we're interested in. We're interested in the extrinsic defects. So. To begin the investigation of, of introducing the yttrium into a Syria cell, we first looked at how the oxygen vacancy would want to bind with the yttrium atom. And so this isn't the, using the full kroger -Bink, um equation given up here. We aren't maintaining charge neutrality in this case. But to first see how the binding of these two defects would be, I considered looking at an oxygen vacancy that is a nearest neighbor to our yttrium dopant, which is given in black here, a second nearest neighbor, which is given in blue, and in green is a third nearest neighbor. In calculating the, for, or the binding energies for these three different cases, what you can see is that a second nearest neighbor and a nearest neighbor are the lowest in energy, while a third nearest neighbor is, is the higher energy. Uh, within the literature, the nearest neighbor has been found to be the more, uh, has been studied and found to be the more favorable formation. Um, and then within the areas of DFT, though, the second nearest neighbor and nearest neighbor are uh, essentially going to both be favorable there. 
And so to stick with what is found with the literature, I've considered nearest neighbor. So now in order to uh, look at this full programming notation, um, I introduce a, a second yttrium dopant. And so there were, uh, there's 16 unique uh, combinations for looking at where that second yttrium dopant would be. And what I found is that actually you see a trimer where you have a yttrium dopant and then an oxygen vacancy and then the uh, yttrium dopant right beside it. And you can see from the formation energy here of 2.957 that this is significantly lower than what you're seeing in the uh, intrinsic defects. Um, for our applications, which as Scott mentioned, this is something that changes pretty much every day, um, but for the current application of looking at uh, potential window materials, mechanical or actually, let me take a step back and we'll talk about the, the effects of the structure by introducing those tokens. Um, you can see that the lattice constant, as far as introducing the dopant, it, it doesn't change significantly. You will find in the literature that there is a difference in lattice constant as you introduce the dopant, but because we can't go to too large of a cell within DFT, um, we're not necessarily going to see that. But what is interesting is that when you introduce the yttrium into the serial lattice, you see that the yttrium wants to move away from the vacancy side. So you get a, is there a way to move this yeah, up? There's a high button uh, on the right. Oh, okay. Nope. Is it still showing on the team? Okay. Uh, so what you see is that there ends up being one uh, short yttria oxygen bond length of about 2.5 to five angstrom and then the rest of them stay at about 2.37 and then the uh, pure yttria um, crystal the bond length of the yttria oxygen is about 2.3 so you can see that there is a difference when you introduce this yttria compared to the pure crystal and so here uh, mechanical properties which uh, would be important for our applications um, I have here both the pure crystals and then just one of the single uh, cases I've looked at where we only have one yttrium introduced into the cell. And what you can see when you introduce the yttria as to be expected, there are differences in our mechanical properties and this can be used to tailor, um, tailor it to the application that's given. One thing that was kind of interesting as far as looking at these calculations with the C12 uh, uh, change when you introduce the yttrium dopant, it increases with respect to both seria and yttria. And I can't tell you in a scientific manner how why that's happening, but it is something that's interesting and something for further investigation. So while using BFT, you can do things hand by hand, <coughs> introduce different atoms into the cell. What's more interesting is seeing how the crystal structure is going to change with changing this doping concentration. So in this figure here, we have an energy landscape. So how the energy is changing. Um, and you can see there are a lot of different local minima, but there's one global minima present. And so what we want to find is if we introduce the dopant, how do what is going to become that global minima and how do we not get stuck in the local minima? And in general, this is an actually a very hard problem, global optimization, um, because it is easy to get stuck in those local minima. And so this package here, which is abbreviated Calypso, stands for Crystal Structure Analysis by Particle Swarm Optimization, is a package that I've been using to look at the, how when we introduce the dopant, how the structure changes, and can we keep that cubic uh, structure? And how this works is it generates different structures using symmetry based on the space groups, and then it'll remove similar structures using various um, characterizations. One of them you can think of as the bond characterization, uh, usually some of the distances of the atoms. And then once you have these structures, you locally optimize them. Uh, you can use DFT or force field methods, which is something Nazmin does 
and then you check if it's converged. In my case, I'm considering enthalpy as a convergence, but uh, there are other convergence methods, like if you're looking at surfaces, surface energies. And again, if it's not converged, it'll go through and it'll do this particle swarm optimization, which is essentially, it looks at those different local minima and it uses its past history to determine how it's gonna move toward the global minima and it creates new structures and then you continue the process. So this is something that I've just begun looking at. Um, there was a different method I was first looking at, but having trouble uh, getting it to work. And right now I'm just checking it to, on Pierce area to make sure it's able to predict the fluoride structure. So moving forward, um, going to look at bonding analysis in these different dope structures. I'm going to use a uh, crystal orbital Hamiltonian population, which uh, if you, if you plot it along the density of states, what you're able to do is if you integrate within an energy, inter energy interval, you can determine which uh, bonds are um, contributing in that interval. And it's kind of an indication of the bond strengths, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, doing some further electronic and mechanical properties to see how these dope structures change. And one thing that's been interesting and is um, something found a lot in the literature is that when you introduce dopants into Syria, the diffusion changes. And so it's an, an under understanding of how those diffusion mechanisms work in dope seria. And then after verification of um, pure seria with the Calypso method, looking at the dope structures. Questions?